Welcome to my high-end dupe series where I bring you deluxe looks look for less and in today's edition I'm diving into Pottery Barn inspired home decor showing you how to achieve the sophisticated style without breaking the bank. So get ready to elevate your space and add that touch of sophistication without the splurge. Subscribe and join, and subscribe and join me on this journey to create a high-end look on a DIY budget. Let's get started. If you want some great looking linens, Pottery Barn is a place for, for, for you, especially the table linens. I was browsing and I came across some of these fringed table linens and I thought they looked really nice right up my alley the way I want my style to go. So I had seen some napkins, but I also saw this frayed linen table throw, which is just a throw to go over your table. It's not necessarily a full tablecloth, and it had a really nice uh, fringed uh, ed edge to it. And I loved the color choices, especially this one. And... Um, but I did not love the $141 price tag that this throw came at. So after a little bit of brainstorming, I did find this canvas cloth in my stash. It did come from uh, Dollarama. It was $4. So I had trimmed it to a size that would fit my table. And then I t it was... Um, uh, kind of sewn together at the end so I just wanted to cut that uh, finished piece off and then I went ahead and just pulled the um, string off of it or the thread until I reached that fr uh, fringe look that the cloth had uh, you can go as much as you want to, uh, or as little mine was about half an inch of a fringe that I had left on the end so as I'm fringing this cloth, I just want to say hello, welcome. My name is Sonia. Welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you're returning. And I'm super excited about today's video because I absolutely love all the dupes that I did. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. So here it is, and I think it's very close to the inspiration. And now moving on to the next one, I wanted to get some placemats. Now, I used to have these green ones that I picked up at Dollarama uh, for $1.50, but I'm not sure if I threw them out or if I um, just can't find them because it seems to be... Um, a repeated thing that I can't find things in my house um, but they were very much the same uh, style of these so I still wanted to show you because I will if I, even if I can't find them I will go purchase these but I still wanted to show you how easy it is to um, redo them if you don't have them in the right color like mine were really bright blue uh, and I no longer want that color so uh, I wanted to change them up into black so I did find these so I took them into my garage and then use this spray paint almost had to had a meltdown because I could not open it it has a child proof lid and apparently I'm a child who cannot open it so I gave it a nice generous coat let it completely dry and it's okay to use it because you're not putting food directly on it you're putting plates on it so you can use the spray paint and spray paint it really in any color that you want I just did it in black and I think this turned out really really nice um, it's it is a matte black even though it looks shiny here uh, and I think the contrast between the plate color and the tablecloth color is great um, so and I think th th for a, about a buck fifty, not so bad. A set of four would cost me around eight dollars versus fifty seven that it was on the Barry Barnes website. Now moving on to another inspiration, going back to the fringed linen, they had these napkins, um, and I thought uh, they were great. Again, set of four. 
uh, in the color that I really liked. Uh, they were $68. A little steep for napkins that most likely uh, might get, end up getting stained so bad that you are going to have to toss them after several uses anyways. So I went ahead with that same uh, material that I had and from just to refresh your memory from the Dollarama I cut a piece off of it um, to about the size of that I thought a napkin size would be you could take an actual nap a napkin and put it up against and measure it out um, I just eyeballed it and then again it had that uh, double end so cut that off because you can't fringe that um, and then I went ahead and started fringing it and to me it's such a satisfying process to pull the string out so with the whole piece of fabric that I picked up at Dollarama for $4, I did have it on hand, but I'm still going to count it as paying $4 plus tax for it. Um, I was able to make one um, table cloth and um, about five napkins. So not bad at all for $4, whereas... It would have cost cost me well over hundred and fifty dollars for the um the cl the table runner th and uh, napkins for napkins. So here it is. I absolutely love it and so very close to the original inspiration. So moving on for my next one, I uh, wanted to complete the setting look. So I went ahead and started looking for some napkin rings and came across this one and I thought, perfect because I knew just the perfect piece that I already had on hand that I was going to toss so it was free whereas a set of four is $42 and it is this belt so I just cut uh, the size of a ring you could use if you have an old uh, some napkin ring, rings laying around as a guide. I just again eyeballed it to what I thought the ring size should be, trimmed it um, to that size, and then I went ahead and cut it and then used hot glue to attach um, the pieces. You can go an extra mile and add another layer across the hot glue so that way the hot you don't see the hot glue um i don't think you can you'll see the hot glue anyways because the when once you slide the napkins in nobody's gonna see where it's joined i thought this was such an easy diy and you can literally make it with any belt you can thrift belts and just make them um you know there's really nice some nice colored belts too that you could use for like spring or even valentine's um you can find bright green bright yellow pink red belts all sorts of different belts and they would act great as napkin rings um so i thought this was like i said such an easy inexpensive diy and i think it looks absolutely fabulous in the table setting that I've kind of started to put together. Now to elevate the look of your table setting, you need some 
lighting or some candles or candelabras and my goodness this um pottery barn have lots of it lots of different shapes styles uh, looks um different materials that it's made out of i did however settle on this hurricane candle holder with gold accents simply because i thought what a great way to use some of my leftover lids from um, all the bath and body works candles because i have been saving all those lids and i thought that turned out uh, that would work really good for the base of the uh, this candle holder now as you saw the small the price of the small ones was $59 and a large one was $134 mine was kind of in between as I am using the little uh, vase the glass vase that you can purchase a Dollar Tree or Dollarama for buck fifty and then I'm going to use some spun gold um, paint and I also used um, antique gold paint as well just to kind of mix them all all up. Um, I was originally going to try and figure out a matching color to the lid, uh, the lip of the lid, but ended up uh, thinking that it was much easier to just paint the lid to, to match the gold that I was going for. Um, you could also, which I would strongly advise you to use some painter's tape just to get a straight clean line. Um, my husband took my painter's tape and I no longer had it. So I just used freehand, but I strongly recommend using tapers, uh, painter's tape. And you can, the nice thing about this, you can make your top gold part as thick or as thin as you want. I did go a little bit thicker than the, the original inspiration just because I liked it a little bit better that way. So once I had painted the top, I had glued the bottom to the lid and I did leave the rubber part of the lid on because it, the glass wedged right in the middle of it. So I thought that was a pretty a good way to keep it in place. And then uh, I decided that it did need a second coat of uh, the on the top again uh, just to smooth it smooth it out so I proceeded on painting the top and then I also painted the bottom as well just to match the colors a battery operated candle now I would probably use a little bit shorter one but I just wanted to show you what that would look like so for my last project uh, pottery barn is a great place to get inspiration for all your uh, flower holders your jugs your vases your pots any sort of thing like that they have so many different to ch different ones to choose from uh, from g different colors different techniques that they use to finish them so i really like that the look of the first one that i just shared um, and i knew i had a vase that was similar to that it was an actual wine uh, bottle from before but i was trying to figure out how i wanted to finish it what finish I wanted to add to it and there were like I said so many different ones to to choose from so this is the shape that I liked but then I like I said was looking trying to figure out which one which look 
that I want to go with and I did end up finding one at the end um, and this is the one that I liked I liked it because it was a little bit darker still very much the same look but just a touch darker so if you've been a follower for a long time, you might have came across this DIY that I did uh, where I painted the bottle white, added some jute rope on top, and then I had some writing at the front of the bottle. I haven't used this in my decor for about the last two years, so I decided it's time to upcycle it again. So I took the jute rope off. It took a little bit of elbow grease to get it off. So I got most of it off and then I was going to come back to it because I needed to burn it. I wanted to burn the, the rope, but um, I had daycare kids who were napping and I did not want it to set the jug on fire just in case because that would be a really tough one to explain to the fire department and the ministry. So I... Um, just went ahead and painted it um i wanted uh, to add a little bit of creamier color to just some areas and while so i'm using old ochre from any sloan chalk paint and just randomly adding it into random spots wherever it was a little bit chipped the paint was chipped and the glass was showing i covered that areas just no rhyme and reason and then I went ahead and got some dirt now it is winter here all the dirt is very wet uh, especially even the one in the garage so it would probably work a little bit better if the dirt was a little bit drier I probably should have taken it out earlier but nevertheless it's I still achieved the look that I was going for so I brushed it all over the wet paint so you can see it's just sticking to the wet paint and then I went ahead and rubbed it off with my hand and just tried rubbing it in, but then decided that it was probably better if I just took a towel and just rubbed it in as much as I could. And this gave it a really neat look. Um, I wasn't crazy about the lines, so, but uh, I knew I was going to do some more paint blending, so I wasn't too worried about it. So because I was uh, wiping this off, there was no drying time in between the coats of paint that I went ahead and added. So the next one is called, uh, it's just acrylic paint and it's called Ivory Cream. Um, and I just took, dipped my rag into the paint and then just rubbed it in, which this in turn made the other paint um kind of brought it back to wetness and it was just blending everything together and this did help with all those lines and just smoothing the lines lines out so I continued to do this through the whole piece just in some areas adding a little bit more in some areas adding a little bit less and you can see where there wasn't any dirt paint on it was lighter which is what I was trying to achieve just different tones throughout the bottle. Once I was happy with all the blending, I let the whole jug dry. And then when I came back to it, I did end up burning the stuff off, but for some reason the camera did not turn on. But this is not what the tutorial is about anyways. So, and I went ahead and painted with that old ochre just the top of the bottle um, in some areas. However, because I was holding it and I was trying to do the bottom part, I did rub some of the paint off. So I end up coming back to it again uh, in a little bit.
The next step, as you saw, I took some of that old ochre and dipped it, the, my paintbrush into it and then dipped the paintbrush directly into the water and applied it um, in random spots and then wiped it down. This just softened up uh, any darker spots. If they were too dark and I didn't love them, uh, it just softened that up a little bit. If you had white antiquing glaze, you could also do that with that. It would kind of give you pretty much the same look. So I did go a little bit heavier with the paint here and a little less water on this area. Just again, just to give it different tones. Uh, you know, when you look at age vases and, and things like that, antique vases, they do have a lot of different tones because they have been, you know, exposed to different, sun, different sides, different sides were exposed to the sun. So it makes things fade differently. And now for the top, I just took some of that dirt and added it to my ivory cream paint and then just painted that on uh, the top and then I just also blended it a little bit uh, right around the top edge now at this point you could stop here but I did want to go a little tiny bit further and I got my crafting sponge and ended up sponging it on and just to add a little bit of texture um, to the piece so I took some of that old ochre put it on the lid and then I wetted my um, sponge and just dabbed just ran again random areas with it And then to finish it, I just dabbed uh, the towel on it a little bit, uh, smoothed out any um, edges that were created. There weren't that many with the sponge. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. And I do love it with the flowers, which I just added. And I think the little bumpy top um, kind of adds extra character to the vase well i hope you guys enjoyed these dupes high-end dupes um i do think that um they came out really really nice i love every single one of them and i can't wait to use them in my decor don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed and i will see you all in my next video thanks for watching